So Starlink recently said that they're making obstructed user performance a top priority. So in other words, if you live in an area with a lot of trees and you're having trouble with your Starlink mounting location, as far as getting rid of obstructions like trees and buildings or whatnot, Starlink says that they're working on their network to allow better performance under those type of conditions. So if you're not already aware, the Starlink obstruction map is a tool that you can access through the Starlink app. And that allows you to check uh, the, the view basically of the dish. And the map displays red areas where you have like trees and other kinds of uh, blockage that interrupts the satellite signal. And when that happens, you'll experience interruptions pretty frequently, depending on the amount of obstructions you actually have. So if a lot of the dish field of view is blocked by trees, then you'll have interruptions, you know, multiple times uh, a minute. If you have less obstructions, maybe you have one little small top of a tree that's kind of encroaching in your Starlink's field of view, then you might notice, you know, an interruption every five or 10 minutes or something like that. So it really just varies as far as if you have obstructions, you're going to have service and reliability issues, maybe even speed issues. But now Starlink says that they're working on it. And I'll just read the quote from the support page uh, on obstructions That's where I got this information. It says, obstructed user performance is a priority. We are continuing to launch more satellites, providing satellite options at better angles for Starlink to connect to. Um, and it goes on to kind of explain a little bit about how Starlink handles these handoffs and just paraphrasing here because it's quite a bit of text, but basically what happens is your Starlink dish will connect to a satellite, the, the optimal satellite for your location. And if that connection because it becomes interrupted unexpectedly, like for, for example, a tree blocking the view, Starlink will automatically hand off to another satellite if it's available. And that's kind of the, the, the caveat there. So we're still pretty early into Starlink's deployment as far as their satellite constellation goes, even though there's more than 5,000 active satellites at this point. But early on, obstructions were a huge issue because there weren't enough satellites to be able to do those automatic handoffs to make a seamless connection. So basically what they're saying here is as time has gone on, they're adding more and more satellites. So there's more alternatives per location. So if you're in the United States somewhere and you've got tree coverage that you just can't get rid of or whatever, and you've just been dealing with these obstructions, Starlink is basically saying that in the future, as more and more satellites launch and become operational, you're going to have more options and they're going to be able to almost seamlessly switch you to another available satellite, even though it's not, you know, the optimal satellite for your location it's at least going to give you a more reliable connection, even though you had those obstructions. Um, so in my opinion, reading, reading this and Starlink's uh, updates on obstruction performance, I think it'll just continue to get better and better. If you're one of those people that's been dealing with reliability issues because you have, uh, you can't find a good location to mount your dish, or maybe you have tall trees all around your house and the only way you could possibly clear them is building a you know 100 foot tower or something like that which is impractical but anyway uh, i see this as one day at a certain point in the starlink constellations maybe as it's closer to being fully deployed or at least you know 75 percent of that or something i think obstructions are the concern is going to be kind of a thing of the past now obviously it's satellite internet you're going to need some sort of view of the sky but I think for the majority, if you have a, a pretty good field of view directly up, uh, I think you'll have a pretty good chance of having a reliable connection. So this is great news for people that live in heavily wooded areas. And there's a lot of parts of the country, especially out east, where you know you have just mountains and trees. And those, those people are having trouble connecting because of those obstructions. And it's really hard to get the dish at a height reasonably to where it could have a good field of view and have no obstructions. So I know this is going to be good news to a lot of people and kind of on the subject of obstructions, the other thing that I had to report in this video was Starlink has actually updated that obstruction tool in the app. So if you notice now, if you go into the Starlink app and go click on obstructions in the menu, you will see a new button uh, that says uh, reset obstruction map. And what that button does 
is it clears out the data so that you could rebuild it from scratch. Now, previously, before this update, that obstruction data reset every time your dish rebooted. So any anytime your dish lost power or rebooted, it cleared that obstruction map completely. So you lost all of your, your previous data there. And it took, you know, six hours, 12 hours to actually rebuild it. So if you were in the process of trying to find a good location for your dish, maybe you're setting it up temporarily in one location, testing it out, and then testing it in another location, that sort of thing. This is kind of good news because it allows you to keep the data there, even though you might have suffered a power outage or, you know, the during the firmware updates, the startup dish actually reboots by itself. So sometimes you don't even have control over whether your dish is going to reboot or not. And with this change, with this new update, that means that the data from your obstruction map is actually saved on the app so that next time, even though you powered off your dish, that data is still available to you. Now it continues to update in real time. So if you have, you know, for whatever reason, if you're something obstructed moved into the field of view of the dish, then, you know, it would update over time. It would see that that obstruction is new and it would report that in the data. Um, so there is a new button on the obstruction page that allows you to actually manually reset that map if you want to. And that's the only way to reset it uh, now at this point. So that that might seem kind of like a little, you know, trivial kind of update. Why, why am I telling you this kind of thing? Well, I think that it is another piece of evidence that goes along with what I talked about earlier in the video where Starlink is making this a priority. And what I speculate is going to happen is that Starlink dishes are going to become smarter and they're going to be able to use that obstruction data that's being now saved to your app, it's going to be able to use that to better predict which satellites it should connect to. So let me give you an example of how that could work theoretically. So let's say you have this, this big tree to the north and it, you just can't get rid of it, you can't move the dish higher, whatever the case may be. It's causing a bunch of interruptions for you and it's you know, this big red area on the Starlink obstruction map. So in the future, maybe Starlink programs in their satellites and their their app for your location to say hey over the last you know 24 hours this obstruction is here here's the data you know it's not clearing out so basically any satellite that's flying over that would normally communicate in that red area we know now that we can't communicate with that satellite so we're not even going to try we're going to find this alternate satellite to connect in that area and what that would mean basically is that you would have a, a seamless connection. Those outages would no longer appear because Starlink isn't trying to talk to a satellite that it knows repeatedly every single day, every single time that satellite passes over, it can't communicate with that area because the tree is blocking it. So I speculate, I'm guessing in the future that the Starlink obstructions will get a lot better for people. Even if you have trees that cannot be removed or mounting situations where you just can't get away from those trees. And part of in this app update where we can now save data to the app as far as the obstructions go, this is part of that uh, is what I'm guessing. And that, that's why it's significant. So uh, that was basically all that I had to share today. You know, are you, let me know in the comments below, are you guys dealing with obstructions? Are you noticing as Starlink goes on in the Constellation deployment, are you noticing that it's gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Uh, and let me know what you think about this. Is Starlink is clearly making it a priority to help people out that are dealing with obstructions. And I think that's great news to share with you guys. So uh, that's it for this video. Just a short news update. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you next time.